good evening uh, so my name is poonam dongre i'll be the speaker for today's webinar so before starting the webinar i would like to give you a few guidelines so if you are unable to hear my voice or if you are unable to see the video that is the screen kindly let me know so that we can fix the problem as early as possible also in between you can uh, send this uh, questions as and when raised and we will also try to answer those questions if any pending questions yes we will answer those questions at the end also so can you hear us if there is any problem you can just uh, ping in the chat window and let us know so we'll wait for 5 minutes and at 4 o'clock we'll start our webinar so this is kind of a testing if you are unable to hear my voice or if you are unable to see the screen kindly ping in the chat window right now so that we can work on it we can try to solve the problem so i hope the screen is clearly visible to everybody also my voice is audible yes so yes everything seems to be great <coughs> okay great so uh, our today's topic is cash flow management cash flow management for small businesses so good evening everybody my name is poonam dongre i'll be the speaker for today's webinar i work as a content uh, team lead in deyasra foundation so we will start our presentation with introduction about deyasra so let's quickly see what deyasra is what deyasra is about Deyasra is a not-for-profit organization. Our aim is to offer end-to-end -end support to small businesses. Deyasra Foundation was started by Dr. Anand Deshpande, Chairman, Founder, and MD of Persistent Systems. So, Deyasra Foundation is a family foundation. and is raised from dr anand deshpande's own funds the name deyasra stands for uh, let's have a quick look at the initials d e stands for deshpande a stands for anand dr anand s stands for sonali that is his wife r stands for riya and a stands for arul these are his two children so you must be thinking what we do at deyasra so basically what we do here is we try to help entrepreneurs to start manage and grow their businesses we encourage uh, businessmen to start their businesses and help them in each stage while setting up a business so in case there are uh, kind of legal uh, queries we try to solve them Qu queries regarding licenses we help them in uh, solving those queries if there is a requirement for funding we do guide them so we help them in the, that area wherever they find they find themselves lost kind of or wherever they need help or maybe they have identified the weak area and now they are like confused what should i do next so uh, this is this is my red area where wherein i, I i'm just lost i'm i've stuck in here and i don't know how to go ahead 
So yes, the Astra is a platform where you get assistance for moving ahead to solving the problem area and achieving your goals. At the Astra, our goal is take is to take is taking forward and encouraging entrepreneurship. So the question comes, why? So as you see, friends, uh, in today's present, like in present scenario, job as opportunities are really less. And if you are having a talent and specific knowledge and experience, and you wish to dream or you wish to start a business of your own, then this is the right way. This is actually a time to start your own business and go ahead instead of keep like you know searching for jobs so saying so when you start your business your own business naturally uh, as per your need you would uh, hire say one or two uh, people extra for uh, for your for you to like for uh, for in your business to assist you you right and in a way you find you, you in a way you tend to create employment for these individuals so maybe in a later phase, even they will become entrepreneurs and will hire more employees. So starting business or becoming an entrepreneur will help society also, will help in creating jobs and will be a best model to go ahead. So th this was an introduction about Deyasra. And uh, our intent uh, to, I mean, Dr. Deshpande's view, his vision to why the Asra was started. Because at initial stage, even Dr. Anand Deshpande faced few problems while starting his own uh, own company. He faced few legal uh, queries. He, did, he didn't knew like how to go ahead with them. So then he thought, if he is facing the problems, then yes, a small businessman would of course face few problems and he would land up in a mess. Maybe he don't know how to get out of it. So this was an intention to start the Asra. So let's move towards our today's topic that is cash flow management for your small businesses. And uh, this is very important topic. We usually keep on doing webinars uh, on different topics. Today we have chosen cash flow management. But yes, we do webinars on funding on on how to plan your business. And there are there are multiple topics. So I would also suggest all of the attendees to uh, go to our Facebook page. And you know, because we put our updates of the webinars of the events which we are going to conduct on our Facebook. So even you will be uh, update like you will be get the updates there. And you can attend the webinars also. So going forward, let's uh, have a look at what is cash flow management and how it works for our businesses. So the term cash flow management, what do you think people where from this has been derived or what is the importance of cash flow? I mean, is it really important? So the answer is yes, it is. The term cash flow management is vast and it is important. Basically, what we do is in our, in our day to day business activities, we we manage our cash, we manage our expenses. But then those are not properly managed. As per the, uh, you know, as per the prescribed skeleton or as per a, as per decided thing, they are not managed. So this is where we land up in a cash flow problem. So cash flow management is very important and we need to see how the problem arises for cash flow, how we need to solve those problems. So where is this derived from? So what happens is in existing businesses, many of many of times there is a cash flow cycle and we see that the liquid cash doesn't matches with the payments or the expenses which are occurred. 
So here is where the cash flow management problem lands. So what we are going to do is we are going to cover how we are uh, going to identify the problems. If the problems identified, then what can be done? And on what basis the cash flow management problems can be identified? So later on, I'm also going to provide you a link of business performance assessment that is business performance evaluation, which is a small test, a questionnaire kind of a thing. So if you go through, if you just give the question answers to those questions, which are related to your business, then the report which is generated will give you a fair view that where your business is lacking or which is the red area or the problem area in your business in which then you can work upon. So now let's see how to identify a cash flow management or a cash flow problem. So there are five KPIs, that is the key performance indicators, which decide to understand at what status your business is or in which area there is a problem. So let's quickly go through the KPIs. The first one is growth in sales. The second second one is availability of cash, which we are going to focus on, uh, which, which is our today's topic. The next one is growth in profit. The fourth one is compliance. And the last one is asset efficiency. So friends, all these KPIs each area is correlated with, with each other, right? So if there is not, there is no growth in sales, then there wouldn't be much profit. To, to achieve profit, your business has to be compliant. Once it is compliant, your asset management has to be in place. So as you see, all these five KPIs are correlated. If compliance and asset efficiency are not managed in turn, it will affect your day to day sales. So there wouldn't be much uh, cash inflow outflow. There wouldn't be much growth and in turn, there wouldn't be much profit. So to just sum it, sum it up the all the KPIs, what they do is they tell you at what stage your business is, is it increasing? Uh, is it is it stagnant or is, or is it reducing? So if it is reducing, then what is the problem area that has been identified? So today, as we are going to focus on the cash flow cash flow management uh, part and the availability of cash. So assuming that availability of cash is a problem what we are going to address is how to identify these problems what is cash flow management what solutions you can have to improve these problems we also have uh, certain suggestions and favors uh, so, so, sorry we also have certain suggestions from our end which will help you to improve uh, the problem area. Uh, there are also like uh, what services the Asra can offer you as problem solving area for ability of uh, for ability of cash. We'll also provide that. So let's go ahead. So we have seen the five important parameters which are used in assessing the business. So as we are focusing more on availability of cash, let's go ahead and see. So there is a phrase here. If you can see so much money, uh, so much of month left at the end of money. So what does this mean? I mean, can anybody just uh, think about this phrase? Like what, what is happening here? 
so much of the month left at the end of money see that means at the end of the month you are having a cash flow problem or else you are having a cash crunch for example there are certain payments certain expenses are scheduled at the end of the month say uh, there are few emis or say you need to pay certain bills at the end of the month and if at all you are running out of cash that you are having then at that time you are having a cash flow problem so this needs to be checked and there are various i mean you should monitor whether your cash is used wisely in business or not so it is important for you to keep monitoring your cash flow that is cash inflow and outflow and whether it is smoothly running whether you are able to meet your expenses whether you are receiving your payments on time this needs to be checked so friends if this is not happening smoothly or you know if you are facing certain problems like uh, as a, as a, as you see in this slide that the month like there are few days to finish the month to complete this month say today is 20 for example today is 28th of january and whatever liquid cash i was having in my hand is now over but then i have to pay a emi of a asset which was purchased so what will happen if i am unable to pay that and why is this happening because there is a problem in a cash flow there is a problem in a cash cycle so the so I, i feel basically need to identify that problem to rectify that problem and go ahead so how is it possible as i told you we can go through the kpis we can see whether the sales are happening or not whether there is a in, whether there is enough cash or not if the profits are growing or not as per our expectations have we met all the compliances are we again you know efficiently managing managing all the assets we need to check all these key areas so this problem wouldn't arise next time so what is cash flow management So I'll just quickly read this. Cash flow management is keeping track of inflow and outflow of money and analyzing any changes in it in order to meet the business requirements. So what is cash inflow and cash outflow? Cash is coming in through various uh, various modes through payments and cash is going out that is that those are your expenses so this inflow and outflow is taking place through various sources so where is where there is also a cash generation as well as you need to meet up your expenses correct so various expenses where cash is needed such as uh, salary electricity bill a telephone bills admin charges or else sometimes it happens that we need to hire more employees then again the salary parameters we need to check on those then whatever our budgeted salary is say for example for 5 employees now it has to be increased to say for 10 employees so this management this decision needs to be taken at a earlier stage there should be proper planning for this you suddenly can't hire two people and and you then you'll end up in a problem paying them a salary because you haven't managed your cash you haven't managed how to pay them 
but then yes you have hired the people as you require them which is true but then at the at the back end you haven't managed the cash the liquid cash or the cash which needs to be paid so there are there can be multiple reasons as i said paying these bills maybe if you are into manufacturing increasing the manufacturing capacity uh, overheads may increase or decrease according to the business activity tracking and analyzing uh, the change like if any in the business as per the market trends so the these all factors needs to be taken care of while doing proper cash flow management right so there are there are three points which explain what cash flow management involves what cash flow management is of so let's quickly go through these points cash flow management involves knowing when where and how your cash needs will occur so after running a business for a couple of months going forward you will need to study uh, the past trends of your business and while studying you will get the answers of these three questions like when is the cash required where exactly in which area it is required and how you are going to utilize it so these three questions will suffice the like the cash flow problem wouldn't arise due to this once you answer these questions so take an example of your business here friends try to analyze your business here say for example i'll take a beauty salon when would i need a cash at a beauty salon if i want to buy products yes i would need a need cash where would i need a cash say if i want to buy a new location or a new uh, outlet for my for my beauty salon then yes for that purpose i would need a ca cash and how how should i meet this these cash requirements so proper planning has to be done beforehand to meet these requirements the next is being prepared to meet these needs when they occur so we have to be prepared we have to do proper planning in advance we need to plan certain uh, our cash flow needs so that when they occur we can correctively easily serve them as i said if i am running a beauty salon and suddenly uh, two of my hair dryers are aren't working and i need there is no other option but i need to buy a new hair dryer then there is a cash need there for which i have to be prepared so for this it is required that you make a provision at a earlier stage because suddenly you know suddenly expenses arise and then it 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 can be a problematic to you know just serve the requirement if you can just relate with the earlier slide so much month left at the end of money so what is happening here the person hasn't planned his cash flow cycle and now he is into a problem that he is unable to serve the expenses or the emis whatever are coming in the remaining days friends are you getting it so there is there, there are hardly few days left say 3 to 4 days to complete the month but the person is unable to meet whatever the expenses are are there in those 2 to 3 days 
so for this for proper cash flow management is required so we saw the second point now let's go to the third point knowing the best sources for meeting additional cash needs once you study your cash cycle once you derive to a conclusion that yes say for in the month of uh, september october november when there is there are uh, different occasions when there are festivals i might need more cash so for this i need to start i mean i need to prepare for this in the month of say in the month of may onwards i need to put a certain amount you know aside i need to make certain investments so that when i am having a cash need to meet additional expenses which i i foresee yes there are certain expenses which might arise i have studied them for these expenses a provision has to be made at a earlier stage this is the time when the business starts running smoothly of course there are certain hurdles sometimes there is a mismatch the timings the maybe the cash flow maybe you have kept aside certain amount but then still the expenses are more than that more than the provision you have made but then yes at least you are prepared for something right rather than nothing so knowing the best sources for meeting the additional cash needs is required going forward let's see what is need for cash flow management why is there is a need when why is there a need for cash flow management so what do you think you can just simply start a business and i mean you you don't think about the finance part in your business and you start a business what will happen think of the consequences friends you may land up into a problem because you are investing cash you are investing your own funds in your business of course you are expecting profits after few months from your business correct so need for cash flow management so we have we have put certain six key points why there is a need for cash flow management let's quickly go through this i'll i'll explain each point to you so for ensuring uh, cash liquidity to ensure cash liquidity what is liquidity friends i mean liquid cash that is the cash in hand that is the cash for emergency that is the cash which you can use which can be disposed that is cash liquidity so for example you are having a order order in hand to to say uh, manufacture a certain uh, 50 to 20 shirts you ha- you are having a order in hand but to meet the this order you aren't having enough raw material and to buy the raw material you are not having enough cash that is the liquid cash what will happen are you getting the scenario so th- there is a businessman who has a manufacturing businesses of shirts t-shirts trousers suddenly he got a order of manufacturing say 50 shirts wherein he has given a timeline a time limit he has to deliver that order say within 10 days and now at the month end wherein he is not having enough cash in hand but he has accepted the order and he has to complete the order right so to meet the order requirement 
he is not having enough cash in the hand to buy the raw material which is required so what what would be the consequences he would create a bad image of himself in the market this will affect his next incoming orders so there are there are consequences which can land him into problem right so we just need to see that these problems do not arise and for this proper management proper planning is required so friends if proper planning is there at a earlier stage then the person wouldn't land up in a problem right okay so next point is monitoring cash inflow and outflow monitoring means to understand from where you are going to receive and from where you are going to make the payments so inflow and outflow is like monitoring from where you are going to receive the cash from where you are going to make the payments this is what inflow outflow means okay next is managing limited cash resources effectively so what is managing limited cash resources what do you think so first of all uh, limited cash flow or limited cash resources how to manage them you need to ensure how to plan the activities so if you can delay certain uh, certain payments or if you can delay certain expenses then that would be great in case if you are in a cash flow problem then if easily you can you know just plan certain activities you can delay certain payments then this is what managing uh, cash resources means going going ahead is planning for timely debt repayment so what is uh, debt repayment so when i'm saying that you are going to receive certain amount uh, say for say on 30th of january and i might also having certain payments on same date so that is what is debt so you need to plan for it accordingly you need to pay to suppliers you know beforehand then you need to manage the cash because if you if you are unable to do so it may hamper your credibility there correct so this may not give a good i mean this may not create a good picture of yours maybe um, if you are unable to make a payment to sub, unable to make the payment to supplier he may next time not give you goods on credit seeing that you have not you haven't made the payment in time also this includes uh, your emis if you are unable to pay pay those emis in time then you may land up into a problem paying more interest to the bank so as i said planning for timely debt repayment is necessary so that we can avoid all these problems correct so next going forward to the next point providing adequate funds for expansion so what is expansion friends once you start your business once it is settled you obviously think of expansion you think of expanding your business you think of giving more services you think of uh, introducing more products 
Correct? This is what expansion means. So now let's see that providing adequate funds for expansion, what does this mean? So while you're adding additional service or a product, you need to do certain research. So a certain R&D is required. So are you having uh, enough cash for it? Are you having enough funds for uh, while investing in the research and development thing? This needs to be checked. If you want to uh, hire additional people, then at that time also, you need to have adequate funds. For, or, or as in if you are, uh, let's take again an example of a salon. If it's a salon and if you want to say buy additional assets, for example, you want to buy chairs or you want to buy different machines, then the funds needs to be ready for buying the assets. So beforehand, based on the type of a business, the funds needs to be kept available. So uh, cash flow again is kind of a technical term and we are trying to put it into our terminology. Going forward, we'll uh, have the next point, planning for investing surplus cash, which will generate revenue. This is an important point, friends. What is surplus cash? Can, any, can anybody just think what is surplus cash? Surplus cash is the cash that remains after meeting all the expenses. So once all your business expenses are met, once you have paid all your bills, paid all your EMIs, you have purchased raw material, and whatever the cash is remaining is the surplus cash. So we need to reinvest this cash. We need to reinvest this cash somewhere. So yes, we can reinvest it in our business for expansion purpose, as I said in the earlier point. So that can be through buying additional assets, which maybe can save your time, can save a few employees. I mean, the you know, human resource and give you more output. So this can be checked upon. Also, you can invest the cash in, say, for example, in mutual funds, wherein the cash can once, I mean, once for expansion it is needed, you can utilize it. So for that, for, for the period in between, you have kept the cash invested somewhere, which will give you certain profits. So these, these were the six points wherein we can see why there is need for cash flow management. Why is cash flow management required? Why do you think that we should, my business should go through a cash flow management cycle? My cash flow management cycle should be in place. So the, these are the six points wherein the need for cash flow management is been highlighted. Going further, cash flow problems are identified through five uh, questions. So we have uh, jot down five questions. So friends, I would suggest you to relate your business here and genuinely give answer to each question if you can just, you know, say yes or no, then you can identify, you can realize whether exactly you are having a cash flow problem or not. If no, then fantastic. I mean, you're doing really good. But then if yes, 
if it is identified then we need to work upon it we need to see how ca we can solve the problem we need to take corrective actions against it okay so let's let's go to the questions the first one is are you receiving the payment from most of your customers within the time limit you have given to them so you have planned for generating uh say a uh, profit in the range of 5 to 10% for your business right you have decided to generate a profit you have uh, budgeted certain sales certain profit and you have thought of uh, thought that ki this time my profit should increase by say 5 to 10% you have thought of it so are you are you meeting the budgeted figures we need to check that are you achieving the profit so if yes then the answer is really nice i mean you are doing well again as i said but then if no if there is a problem area then we need to identify it correct so you are generating uh, the profit at the end of year you so uh, how are you analyzing it through your balance sheets and pnl statements correct at the end of the year the person you have appointed to see your accounts to manage your accounts the person is preparing the pnl and balance sheets and you are analyzing whether you have met the profit or not as per the requirement as per the decided thing so if yes you are if you are generating it then well and good but during the year when you had a cash crash crunch the reasons behind it should be identified i mean yes you are achieving the profit but still you are having cash crunch in between uh, in between the year while serving certain expenses certain emis see there there are many unplanned expenses which turned turned uh, suddenly and you were not prepared for it so what happened you need to analyze these problems you need to identify them correct are you able so friends if you, the answer is yes no please please tick out it to, uh, to yourself here so are you receiving the payment from most of your customers within the time limit you have given to them if yes then good and if no then why what is the reason why aren't you receiving the payment in time we need to think about it right if you are not able to receive the payment then you need to push your customers you need to give them a reminder that hello you are liable to pay me certain amount and the time has already lapsed because this may crash your cash flow cycle okay next is are you able to pay most of your suppliers within the stipulated time so all the questions are interlinked friends if your customers are paying you in time then you would be able to pay to your suppliers in time i mean if you are receiving a pay receiving a payment then you will be able to pay are you getting it so it's a cycle you you receive a money from certain certain person and you have already purchased certain goods from a supplier you need to pay him so this cycle needs to be seen if problematic needs to be corrected right next is so are you able to pay most of your suppliers within the stipulated time if yes good if no then what is the problem i mean are you not having enough cash to pay the, pay the suppliers or the cash is utilized somewhere else that needs to be checked next is are you able to make payment for most of your expenses in time 
So what happens is even if you are meeting uh, your profits and still uh, having cash crunch, then there is a problem. There, this problem might be in disguise. But then we need to figure it out. That I am unable to meet the expenses. But yes, I am achieving certain percentage of profit. Then what? What's wrong? What's happening? What is happening into my business which I am unable to detect, which I am unable to identify? This needs to be checked. So currently things might seem to be, you know, working really smooth, but to identify the cash flow management, you need to think that how will I go to it? How should I identify it? If yes, there is there. I mean, the, the problem is there. So maybe the problem wouldn't be for say many months, but then yes, in certain maybe two to three months, I am facing the problem. So that needs to be checked. OK. Again, is the CC account within the limit and interest is paid on a regular basis? So the cash credit account, that is the term loan, which is for a shorter period. Is that EMI paid in limit? I mean, EMI paid on regular basis so that the interest, which whatever is charged on the CC. Is correctly charged and that is not increasing. So we need to check this. So if any of the question you are having an answer as no, then that is a problem which you need to rectify, which we can solve. So of course you can approach the Asra, you can talk to us, you can tell the situation you are into and we will try our best to you know get it get you out of it we can help you in giving suggestions we have mentors at our end which understand what the problem is and consult accordingly so there are different services at the asra which you can avail next is So there is this case study. Just a sec. I guess I missed. Uh, yeah, is this the CC? Is the CC account within the limit and the interest is paid on regular basis? So what happens is, I mean, while going through all these five questions, what you need to do here is. Maybe um, what actionables you can take here is maybe you can reduce the credit period which you give to customers. So I'm, I'm talking uh, in a sense that you get more of answers of yes. So what would be the actionables? You can uh, give lesser credit period to your customers once your business is est established, when you say your product has been uh, settled in market and it is having a, you know, proper demand, then yes, you can have market study, you can do market study, you can consult other business owners. Also, you can ensure key, uh, what credit period they are giving or what is the credit period in the market right now. And you need to check whether you the credit period which you are giving to customers is not higher and is not lower as compared to that of the market trend. So you also need to check the inflow and outflow time of your cash cash, basically the liquid cash. So reducing the credit period, but giving certain discounts to your customers might help you. Right. This will be more beneficial. So wh what do you mean by giving discounts? Say I'm 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 having this pen for 100 rupees and I'm selling this pen for 100 rupees. And what is happening is I'm I'm, give, I'm getting a cash of say 80 rupees and 20 rupees I'm giving a credit. Like pay me after 10 days the remaining 20 rupees. 
or vice versa we can take we are taking a 20 rupees cash in advance and 80 rupees is the uh the credit amount then what is happening so here we are not getting the entire value of the product so what we can do is we can give a discount correct we can give a discount see the 100 rupees spent you can have it for 95 rupees so about pen i am talking about a good pen say for a parker pen or something you might be thinking this is really an expensive pen of rupees 100 so if i give a discount of 5 rupees here then certainly the person will pay me 95 rupees cash he is unable to pay 100 rupees friends but yes 95 we can pay me immediately then i am in a profit paying him a cash of rupees and 95 getting a cash of rupees 95 from him i am extremely sorry so in this case what is the thing that i am getting my entire cash for the product whatever it is correct and then the cash flow problem may not arise as the as there wouldn't be any credit uh, period okay so giving discounts can again be more beneficial about emi we need to pay our emi say about the cc account also because paying emi will uh, you know will keep our sibil score on a higher on a higher side so what is sibil score sibil score is a record is a record of a, of our credit history and if we fail to pay certain emi we may land up into a problem as our few of our assets are there as a security they also may get affected if we are in default of making certain payments to the emis okay so that needs to be checked again about the term loan the cc loan amount as i said we need to check that even so to sum it up these five questions will give you a fair idea where you are businesses lacking in the terms of cash flow now let's go ahead so there is this uh, very interesting case study which happened at deyasra give me a second i'm extremely sorry i guess there was some some uh, technical problem let's go ahead so what i was talking about the case study okay so th this is very interesting case study let's go through this so this person is having a bakery bakery business and he came to deyasra so this is this this is a real case my friends so what he says here is all of my profits are disposing into paying interest at around 18 to 24% which is really high 18 to 24% is really higher side of interest rate so what is he doing he is paying this interest for these private loans so he came to us saying what do i do now i am bit confused as the as you know i don't know what happened
give me a second so he came to dayasra his name was uh, we have changed his name here say uh, suraj kumar and uh, he had taken loan of 7 lakhs from a money lender and another loan from uh, of rupees 5 lakhs from different money lender so what happened here is he was paying a higher interest to both of these money lenders though his business was making good sales every month he wasn't making any profits so both the loans from the money lenders were the rate of interest were ranging from say 18% to 24% and seeing the growth of business he he needed more funds so he came to dayasra and took mentor consultation for same and the interest so what our mentors did was they analyzed this they saw the history of his loans that first of all the loans were taken from the private lenders at a very higher rate so the interest and the part of the principal paid to the money lenders was eating majority of his profits friends he was suggested by our mentors to approach a nationalized bank to avail a fresh loan which will not only expand his business but also he will able to repay his private loan and what will happen this will reduce the interest liability substantially accordingly a fresh new project report was prepared for him by our udyog mitras we studied his case our udyog mitra studied the case they went through what problem he was facing they saw that his business was perfectly fine he was achieving profits but then at the end of the year he landed up like with no cash in his hand so when this happened our udyog mitra studied the case our mentors consulted him and our udyog mitra prepared a project report for him so this project report was prepared for a fresh loan which he applied at a nationalized bank and this reduced the interest payout of course this took this took few days to get the loan sanctioned but then we got a solution from for him we approached a bank and we had little time finding a, you know the right lender for him but when the loan was sanctioned he was really happy because the interest payout also reduced and he ended up paying a much lesser, lesser interest rate that he was paying to the private lenders so what you need to learn here is from the from this case what you need to take take with you is that please ensure that the sources from where you are getting funds are the right sources you are not approaching the private lenders which will you know give you the loan but at any rate of interest which they think so instead of improving your business it comes that it comes a way wherein you are unable to you know even sustain your business so this is much required friends you need to study from this you need to learn from this that there, there is a right source for your funds where you need to raise your funds taking loans from the money lenders try to avoid taking hand loans so yes he came to dayasra as i said and as per the advice as per the consultation he was really happy 
because his loan was sanctioned that too for a bigger amount and say for a loan interest of 14 to 16 percent so whatever profits he earned now could actually be seen so this was one case now let's see what is gap analysis and suggestions for those so whatever a problem you are facing in cash flow management so there are certain gaps which needs to be identified so i have highlighted only the cash flow uh, gaps whatever there are and i have given suggestions for improvement and also at the asra friends we are having certain tools and supporting resources which will help you take corrective actions so lower percentage of cash sales what does this means reduce credit period to customers and improve recovery that means as i gave gave you the example uh, just few minutes before about a pen reduce the credit period of that customer reduce reduce the credit amount of that customer and try to gain more cash from him for the product which you are selling so this can be more beneficial friends improve recovery what does this mean so study your recovery mechanism what it is about if if you are missing on something try to change the recovery mechanism try to send reminders to your customers try to use new marketing techniques try to give cash discounts as i said before because certain people are ready to pay uh, cash at one go if it's if it's of a lesser cost you know so give cash discounts what happens here is you get 100% cash at in your pocket so try to figure out how to recover the mechanism how to improve the recovery mechanism reduce exposure to these to those customers who regularly delay in paying so there are certain customers who tend to who have a tendency to pay uh, late even if you give them a say a credit period of say 10 days they land up paying you after on a 15 day so you know their history you have uh, studied these customers what will do you do your you need to reduce exposure to those customers you need to minimize such customers this will help you in again managing your cash flow problem the next is uh, i'm also going to tell you about the resources and tools i'll come to it later first i'll explain the problems and the i'll give you the suggestions on it the second one is unplanned capital expenditure so there are two types of expenditures one is capital expenditure and one is revenue expenditure so what is revenue expenditure it is for our day to day expenses day to day activities as i said for the electricity bills salaries uh, say for the repairs and maintenance admin cost etc these are the revenue expenses and capex that is the capital expenditure this is for buying new assets new shop so this is capital expenditure so plan for raising adequate funds to meet the capital expenditure while planning ensure funds are raised from profits raising additional capital long term loans etc ensure that this should not be taken from working capital because if you take this from working capital then you may land up into a problem again because you will be unable to meet the daily expenses whatever your raw material cycle is that may hamper again 
so ensure that this should not be taken from working capital whatever whatever provisions you have made you can make the unplanned expenditure from those provisions okay so supporting resources and tools we can see uh, we have this inflow and outflow tracker which will help you to use uh, and maintain the record of your business this will help you in uh, giving you a clear view of your inflow and outflow cash whatever the expenses are and whatever the payments are so the inflow and outflow tracker is really uh, beneficial i'll also show you how it is so that you can you know just go through what it like how you can put your the details of your business there again going forward to the age wise debtors that is and the sales register age wise creditors and the purchase register so here you can mark the debtors and creditors so that you can uh, define a period that can be of 30 days say for 60 days 90 days etc so th this is just an example we also have a cash budget tracker so where in actual uh, cash budget as well as the budgeted figures you can just compare and see that uh, have you landed up to mark after uh, taking the you know required figures you can see you can analyze whatever the cash budget is have you met up to the uh, whatever thing you have decided on then comes accounting services so we also have a certain service providers at our end which will help you manage your account books which will help you maintain your records after taking a required documents required inputs from your end they also help you in uh, gst returns gst registrations filings so this is the service which we offer you can any time contact us for any of the services which you you would like to avail so going forward there is one more live case which i would like to share with you guys what happened here was i'll just give you a quick overview of what happened and how deyasra helped him so this person uh, mr rex he was running a business of mobile accessories and allied services for last 4 years and he had issues to keep track of his personal and business income and expenditure what happened was he used to mix those expenditures the personal and the business one so he came to deyasra he told us that what happened is i am unable to maintain the records so you can see see your a caption fret not use inflow outflow tracker to segregate your personal and business income and expenditure respectively so he came to us and he said that i am having a problem while uh, maintaining my records my maintaining my personal and as well as my business expenses so uh, yes mentors consulted him after seeking guidance from mentors at deyasra uh, for his cash crunch and future business planning we suggested him to use our inflow outflow tracker which is in a excel format the uh, you know our udyog mitra explained him how to use it and we suggested him to notify us if there is any problem so the inflow outflow tracker was given to him for last 10 months we suggested him like keep on repeating repeatedly using it the tool gave him basically the real picture of the financial health of his business so the inflow outflow tracker he started maintaining his expenses 
and now he is able to handle the income and expenditure in much better way so he is able to segregate his business expenses as well as his personal expenses so this is the inflow outflow tracker i will just open the link give me a second yes it's here great just a minute okay so here is our inflow outflow tracker we also have given certain usage guidelines you can whenever you want to read it you can go through those guidelines and go ahead using the tracker so what is here in the tracker this is a inflow that is whatever the cash you just need to select the drop down so you can see the opening balance the cash sales any advance receipts you just need to fill up this next is the monthly calculations that is the monthly report whatever your budgeted monthly things are as well as so each month you can see here you can fill the figures next is the cash budgeted versus the actuals this is really good tool friends once you see a cash budgeted versus actual you can analyze whether you are meeting the profits you have decided you have budgeted whether meeting whether you are meeting the sales you have budgeted or not then we also have developed a customer name uh, kind of a data you can keep here then there is age wise data again yes vendors name so this is how the inflow tracker is so this is really an easy tool to use you can approach us you can call us we will make you understand how to use it we'll study your requirement we'll give you necessary guidelines to use the tracker but yes it is a really useful tool so going forward to sum it up as i said business performance evaluation test we are going to send you a link i'll send you it in few minutes so just go through the test go through the exercise give correct give correct answers and then you'll be able to you know analyze where your business is what is the status of your business through this business performance evaluation so what is there in this exercise these five areas the five kpis we have put certain questions related to these five areas wherein you will finally land up the report will finally give you a clear view that where is the problem or great if there is no problem right now in your business so you will get a answer yourself to the questions mentioned so this is the business performance evaluation link i would request all the attendees to please note down the link we are also going to send you the link you can also use the chat window to uh, give us the responses if or the feedback if any related to this link kindly note down the link we are also putting it in the chat window friends there is also a feedback link if you can just give couple of minutes and quickly give us a feedback that would be really great and appreciable i am just keeping this slide on for few seconds more so that you can copy down the link both the links i again request kindly give your feedback so that what happens is next time when we are doing certain webinars we can incorporate changes if any required according to your feedback so your feedback is really valuable for us so if you need an appointment 
quickly call us anytime these are the services which we provide so that is the business planning service how to plan your business we guide in licenses and legal compliances we have professional services then we have facilitation of loan funding we also help on how to improve your business performance yes marketing support and design services and on our platform friends you will find different manuals which are freely downloadable so which is a huge knowledge resource i would request all of the attendees to kindly visit our website that is www.deyasra.in if you can go to our website and here at the resources if you can click on msme checklist just scroll down further and there is a huge knowledge resource friends you can utilize it you can just go through different manuals we have different manuals say on business planning to gst registrations on digital marketing on shop pack fssi so there are number of you know useful manuals which you can which you can go through so these are our numbers which you can uh, you connect us with also we are there on facebook twitter so uh, i would like to uh, end this webinar so kindly let me know if there are any questions because we keep on conducting different webinars events so let me know if any questions are there regarding today's webinar on today's topic if anybody is having any query okay so i have got a question uh yes so this person says do you help us in solving the rest of the kpi problems so definitely you land up in any of the kpi problem if you are having a problem in growth of sales in profit in asset management yes we do help you in solving the problems from any of the or the rest of the kpi thank you yes there is one more question so how to apply for loan so friends let me tell you we at deyasra prepare a project report so which is acceptable by banks multiple banks of course and so once you submit this project report to bank you can apply for a loan so we study your business we study the case we study the requirement of your funds we study the business activity and then going ahead our udyog mitras take relative information from you and the service providers help in uh, help them in making the project report so once you approach the asra we can once you come here we can talk in length whatever the problem is and we can find a relative solution for it <laughs> okay so i don't see any more questions
Okay, so there is one more question: How to get an appointment with the Asra, and about the charges? So uh, for appointment, you can call us on the number which is displayed on the slide right now. That is eight double six double nine eight double five double nine. Yes, this can be where you can just call us and connect with us. About the charges, so once you contact us, once you tell tell us what is the problem, what is the uh, what is the need, what is the help you are uh, asking for, you are looking for at our end, we'll tell you about the charges. So, are there any more questions? Okay, so there is one more question. What amount of loan can you provide us? So friends, we help you here at making the project report. We study the business model. We study your idea. We see whether it is viable. We see whether the model is sustainable. And then it is decided that if certain amount of loan can be given to you. If you are eligible to get certain amount. If you are having certain collateral security to give to a bank. If you are able to raise margin money against it. So these all points are considered while applying for a loan. So if you can just give us a call and tell us what the business activity is right now. And is it existing business or you are just starting a new business? Kindly let us know so that we can give you appropriate and a specific answer. So uh, I guess I have uh, answered most of the questions. Thank you so much. It was very nice to be with all you guys there. So for more queries, you can call us. You can log on to our website. You can check our knowledge resource platform. It is very useful. It is freely downloadable. Please go to our website and check the uh, resources, the knowledgeable uh, things there are. You can go through our guides. Please go and like our Facebook page. The reason behind this is you will be updated for upcoming events, upcoming webinars. We also conduct on ground events. So if you wish to come for the events, if you wish to attend next webinars, you can get the recent updates on our Facebook as well as Twitter. You can write us at team at theasra.co.in. So we would be really happy to serve you further. Thank you so much.